Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my football manager series. This is episode number 10. And today we're returning on the back of the season opener as we face Chelsea at home and newly promoted Norwich away at Carrow Road. Before we get to the games though, shall both be getting on off camera. And I've also made a couple of new signings as well. We'll get to that in just a moment's time. So of course in the last episode we started off with a 1-1 draw in the opening day to Brighton where we were so close to getting a win on match day one. Only Evan Ferguson popped up with a last second equaliser. But following that though, really good start to the season for Bournemouth continued. Uh, we began with a 2-1 victory at home to West Ham. Three late goals in this game. First Dominic Solanke uh, with another one. Skamaka leveled for West Ham with five minutes to go but with like a minute on the clock. I don't know what happened here but Solanke tapped in for about a yard out to make it 2-1. Uh, following that, we beat Leicester by a goal to nil. Once again, Dominic Solanke. What a start to the season for our number nine. Coming up big late on in a 1-0 victory over the Foxes. And in a 2-2 draw away at Goodison Park against Everton. What a comeback in this game, man. We were 2-0 down inside the first 25 minutes. DCL bagging an early brace for the Toffees. Looking likely without our first loss of the season. But Solanke again, once again, tapping in for about a yard out, made it 2-1. Then Neil Mopai got himself sent off. Shock horror. I swear this guy is more of a wind-up merchant than he is a footballer. And uh, soon after that, Alex Scott scored his first goal of the season to make it 2-2, as we'll certainly take the point there. And our final game was our first loss of the season, but I wasn't really bothered about it. Lost to Swansea away in the Carabao Cup second round. It's not important, and it won't be important until we have a thick enough squad to worry about this. Joel Perot scored a hatch. We see my lineup here. I mean, it was just a really, really weak team. I had David Brooks playing bloody left back in this game, so that kind of sums it all up. So to start the season off in the Premier League, um, yeah, good start, man. Uh, undefeated in our first four games. Two wins, two draws, and uh, right now, sixth place. If we can finish sixth place come the end of the season, then uh, yeah, I'd take that every day of the week. So two new signings for the Cherries, and I'm really happy with both of them. We'll start off with the backup left back. It's just an absolute bargain. Yep, Nuno Tavares is in from Arsenal on a one-year loan deal, and I'm only paying six grand a week. <laughs> what a bargain this is. There's no monthly fee, uh, there's no mandatory transfer fee. It's an optional one, so if I don't want to buy him coming the end of the season, I don't have to, so that's up to me. Um, but yeah, six grand a week is all I'm paying to have Nuno Tavares here. In the Premier League, that is a bargain. You know I've been bebota bemoaning Bournemouth's financial situation. Well, that is just an absolute steal there. Uh, as we know, Tavares out on loan last year at Marseille. He did well. He, he shared the left-back role there. He did quite well. And now in on just six grand a week. He's a backup left-back for Lloyd Kelly. Great fitness, great energy, absolutely rapid and technically pretty solid as well. I'll tell you that every day of the week. And... My other side, it was a permanent transfer, but I'm buzzing with this one. If you watched my Wolves save, my last FM save I did a couple of years ago, well, you'll know all about the mental man. Yes, Morton Forsby is in, and I'm just absolutely gleaming with this signing because the reason why Forsby are signing with Wolves is because he had the magic trio at 20. I'd never seen it before. 20 determination, 20 teamwork, and 20 work rate. He's now lost that, but he's still got 20 determination, 18 teamwork, and 16 work rate. But Forsby, to me, every team needs someone like Morton Forsby. Terrific energy. Look at that, man. 19 stamina with 16 actual fitness. Mentally works incredibly hard and a real selfless player as well. And to me, this guy, like every team needs a Morton Forsby. So on deadline day, I picked him up £2.3 million from Union Berlin. And mate, I'm absolutely buzzing with this sign. I've had him before in my wall save and I got him once again. Love Morton Forsby, man. Every team needs a Morton Forsby as far as I'm concerned. So I want to show you our financial situation before we jump into the first game as well. Um, I'm really happy with how we've handled this situation, man. Like, honestly, the budget is still quite high, but I said I'm not going to spend that. Absolutely not. I'm not putting us in the red. And so far, so good. Since the takeover, I've stayed in the green, and that's really important. And for the wage budget as well, I mean, we're paying 1.22 mil a week. Last year, we were paying 1.21. We've only gone up by £100,000, if that, um, this this season. That's that's really impressive, considering a few players had wage hikes. And, of course, we've made improvements to our team as well. 
I have to say, I think I'm, I think they're doing a really good job here with the finances. So long, long may it continue. So yeah, uh, first game is indeed going to be Chelsea right now, top of the league, four wins in four for the Blues. So this is going to be a very tough fixture here if we are to stop their run. So heading into the game right now on the injury report, a few players are down. Uh, Senesi currently has a minor knock as uh, Batarina as well, who got injured on the first game with a pull groin, isn't fit enough to play today. And Lewis Cook is of course still coming back from those crucial ligament -y damage last season. Uh, Fredericks is also down uh, with a damaged Achilles. We won't see him again until around Christmas time, maybe January as well. So a bit of a blow there for our normal starting right back. And of course, Latan is down with a twisted ankle as well. So heading into the game, it is the 4-2-3-1 you saw in the opening day. And this is our team. Achoa is between the sticks. The back for is Kelly, Zabani, Metham and Walker-Peters. Scott and Lerma through the middle in the DM area with Traore on the left, Tavani on the right, David Brooks coming alive in the attacking midfield role and Dominic Solanke up top as well. I didn't really get on with David Brooks last year. You know, I really didn't. But now he's... Um I don't know. He's, he's starting to come good. He, he had a good end to the last season and, and this season as well. One assist in three games and I think he also caused one of our goals as well. I'd love to see it. So yeah, he's uh, with Solanke up top and on the bench, Travers, Forsby, Tavares, Billing, Pearson, Anthony, Christie, Uotara and Kiefer Moore as well. First game is Chelsea at home. I'll take a point. Come on you, Cherries. So first highlight coming to the Cherries with Metham. Playing it back to Guillermo Ochoa and forward we go. This will be Ochoa's fifth game of the season uh, in the league, which means that he will get his one-year extension after today, which is totally fine to me. He's had a decent start. He's, he's clearly still got it, even at 38 years old. As a leader, he does a pretty solid job for us between the sticks as well as Tavernier fires just over. I'm buzzing with that signing, man. I really am. Like Literally bought him in for £200,000. Fuck his age. Who cares, man? Like, seriously, this guy has still got it. Yeah, that's Vink Stan. He's set for his second clean cheat in five. What a fantastic start. It's Premier League football for Guillermo Ochoa. Life in those old bones yet. The question is, can he keep it? Highlight for Chelsea. Their first real attack of the game. And Sterling fires it way over. We're looking pretty comfortable out there against the league leaders. 10 minutes to go, Chelsea looking for a late winning goal as N'Golo Kante sends it long to Sterling who beats Lloyd Kelly and Enzo Fernandez denied by you know who, Guillermo Ochoa, the veteran to the rescue. I must say in this year's FM I've noticed there's a lot of late goals that get scored and conceded so I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea do nick it to death there but what a save by Ochoa. To keep us still deadlocked. Kelly into Lerma. And now Jefferson out wide to Walker Peters. Can we snatch the three points late? Uatara. Christie! Was Uatara offside initially? Defenders appealing for it. I think that might be disallowed, you know. I think that might be disallowed. Does it stand? It does! Four minutes, lads. Four minutes. As Oh, no. No. Is it a spot kick? Kelly with the dispossession on Kai. Is it a pen or is it a free kick? It's a pen. And Guillermo Chawa, I mean, great save a few minutes ago. But he's going to need to provide some serious heroics here to the Nyla Kaku. Which he does! Chawa! Oh my god, no way. No way. Guillermo Ochoa. Right, I need to burn the clock, man. I need to burn the clock here. Uh, let's bring on uh, let's bring on Pearson uh, for Lerma, energetic sort of player. Uh, and let's also I'll tell you what, I'll take to I'll take off the captain Kelly, who was on a booking and gave away that pen as well. And I think I'll also bring on Jaden Anthony for Trero just to burn the clock as we enter stoppage time. Guillermo Ochoa! Unbelievable! Big save at 0-0, then we take the lead and then stops a penalty. How do we replace NATO? There's your fucking answer. Didn't even play that well to be fair, but do you know what? That's an incredible scout. We stopped Chelsea's 100% record and pick up our third win in five. 38 years old, Guillermo Ochoa. And this is proof right there. I know, I know, I know. We all love the Wonder Kids, we all love the youngsters, but Seriously, man, like you, you, you've got to look at those veterans and say, what can they do for your team? Well, two clean sheets in five, a penalty save, and a man in a match display against Chelsea. The league leaders, four wins in four for two hundred thousand pounds. Incredible! Look at this, man, Colo Torre, the ultimate hype man. He prefers a Choa to Donnarumma. 
Guillermo chose a standout performer. How did he gauge their award-winning display? I wouldn't swap him for anyone, not even Gigi. I mean, I would, but you know, I, I still, I still love it, Toro. Ah, and right on cue as well. Uh, Guillermo Chell has been given an automatic one-year extension on his contract due to playing five league games this season. His contract will now expire on Monday, the thirtieth of June, twenty twenty-five. That's not a rolling clause, by the way. Like it doesn't, it doesn't carry on season after season. But yeah, an extra one year for a Chell on twenty-seven grand a week for two hundred thousand pounds. I tell you, man, that game alone was worth two hundred thousand pounds. Ugh. International breaks take so long to get through. It's realistic though, isn't it? I mean, like when the international breaks come round after an amazing Premier League weekend, it's like, oh, for goodness sake, two weeks you got to wait for it to return. Uh, Solanke, I know, he did, I know he didn't score in that game, but Dominic Solanke, man, 5-5, five 7.48 five, average rating. I'm so glad he turned down those contracts from Norwich and Sheffield United. I don't know where we'd be with that. I'm going to take that transfer valuation off now. This guy is so important to us. Hey, Dennis Bergkamp! Dennis Bergkamp! Dennis Bergkamp! Dennis Bergkamp! Ah! Good stuff. Um, one of the most iconic bits of commentary, that. Oh, Dennis Bergkamp! Oh, I love to see the coaching quality improve. It's so important to me, coaching staff. It's so, so important. Like... I, I can't wait until, I hate to say it, but some of these guys who clearly aren't as good, you know, leave at the end of their contracts. I'm not going to release them because it will cost money and we don't have the money to be doing that. So I might as well keep them until they go. But yeah, I, 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 I to me, like coaching, like hiring and firing staff is one of my favorite aspects of the game. I just love a Great backroom staff, you know. Oh yeah, and uh, just so you guys know, I've got my national A now, and I asked the board to put me on a coaching course for Continental C, which they approved, so that will be the third highest I can have. Sorry, fourth highest. Uh, then it's Continental B, Continental A, and Continental Pro. So my attributes now look like this. They're gradually improving. I said before, I wish you could allocate them yourself. They, they come on, I, I believe, completely randomly, but I wish that you could allocate them yourself. And also as well, I did ask the board if we could, increase uh, or improve sorry our training facilities which they did agree to as well and that will finish I think at the end of this month actually yeah at the end of this month which is brilliant because that will see our facilities improve uh, from good to great which is good because our facilities for a Premier League side let's be honest here just aren't good enough also, I um I did have Phil Jones on trial, by the way. I'm not sure if you might have uh, you might have seen it in the news articles there, but I did have Phil Jones on trial. Um, I decided against signing him on a one year deal because it would have cost like twenty grand a week, and it would just be an emergency cover, which is is fine. But you know, we we're enough of a meme team already. We don't need to add to the memes. Right then, second and final game of today's episode, Norwich away, Carrow Road, newly promoted to the Premier League, just one point in their first five games, should be a banker as we aim to get ourselves back in the European place after a great start to the season. So heading into the game, why mess with a winning formula as you stay with a 4-2-3-1 and the same line of Achoa. Between the sticks again, back four, Kelly, Zavani, Mefham, Walker, Peters, Scott and Lerman, the DMGO, with Traore on the left, Tavernier on the right, and Brooks supporting Dominic Solanke. On the pitch, Travis, Senesi back on the Bench, Tavares, Forsby, Billing, Anthony Christie, Uatara, and Kiefer Moore as well. Second and final game, it is the Canaries. Let's get another big win here. Come on, you cherries. So first of all, like coming to the Canaries with Armstrong down the right-hand side. Back to Max Aarons. In goes the deep cross and... Well, Jesse Lingard has scored a header from perhaps the tightest angle you'll ever see. How did that go in? Max floats it in first time, and I mean, I don't, I don't even know how he squeezed it in from that angle. I mean, I'm going to trust the goal line technology, but uh, <laughs> how did he get it? Did he curl it? Did he curl a header? So half time, we've done absolutely nothing. So I'm going to point the finger at my players assertively and say, come on, lad, show a bit of desire. You don't look like a team that wants to win. We've done nothing, absolutely nothing. So I'm going to ask the boys to play a little bit quicker and I'm going to ask them to be a little bit more direct in their play. Other than that, I'll leave things as they are for now. So at the moment, I don't I don't have a problem with the tactics based on our form, but we've got, to, we've got to get some chances going. We've got to play with more urgency, more assertiveness. 
I say this all the time, but like if a team loses and they've been comfortably beaten, fair enough. Maybe they were just, you know, worse than the team on the day. If they've been a bit unlucky, fair enough. That's life, that's football, that's how it goes sometimes. But if you've lost and you've not put in any kind of effort and it's been a whimper, that is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Traore with the leveller. Great ball by Alex Scott. But would it be disallowed? VAR checks it. I think he was on though to me. And it is indeed awarded. Great ball by the wonder kid Alex Scott. And Hammered Traore gets his first goal as a permanent Bournemouth player. Yeah, onside. And it's a great finish. So that will most likely do it for the game. But you know what? I'm not against the point there. Much better second half. And that's what I wanted to see. Finally got a chance and we took it as well. I'll take it. I'll take it. It means we stay undefeated with three wins and three draws. We're unlucky. Much better second half. That. That's the response I wanted. Yep, our longest undefeated run since joining Bournemouth in a European place right now. If you'd offered that to me at the start of the season, I would have bitten your hand off. So I'm not going to be too disappointed about that draw there at Carrow Road. Right, guys, that will end today's episode. So big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, if you had, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. Let's gather some pace here. Yeah? Uh, let's play through all of October and probably all of November and then come back with either Liverpool at home and Man City away or Man City away and Arsenal at home. One of the two, but we'll find out in the next episode. So have a great day, much love, and I'll see you for that one very soon.